After interfering in the 2020 election by spreading disinformation and suppressing real news, the Biden regime's goon squad, the FBI, the DOJ, the DHS, the State Department, and yes, even the press secretary can't pull off these authoritarian moves anymore. Not that KJP was fooling anyone. With Biden's Ministry of Information stopped in their tracks, it's going to be a lot harder for them to manipulate future elections and silence their opposition. So it's a big win for the First Amendment. Well, let's not start sucking each other's quite yet. But don't think for one minute that they're not going to try, and their state media accomplices are already making that very clear. And furthermore, Danny, they do make exceptions. The judge makes exceptions for, for national security and criminal activity. But isn't there a fine line when it comes to national security specifically, especially when we're talking about elections here, the fact that election, uh, you know, the, the full faith that the American public has in elections could be undermined? Couldn't that potentially be a national security threat? What? So this state government operative posing as a reporter is already looking for excuses for the government to get around the First Amendment. And his first example is that unless the government can censor their opponents, quote, the public full faith in the elections could be undermined. What? I can hardly believe what I'm hearing because all of this stems back to an operation carried out by Biden, the intelligence agencies and state media to justify the suppression of real news as quote, Russian disinformation before the election, thereby manipulating it in Biden's favor and destroying half the country's faith in the elections. Of course, and really one of the core issues here is when and how often and to what degree can a government agency and specifically the White House or maybe the Surgeon General or some other government agency, uh, to what degree can they contact a private social media company and put some pressure on to advance their message? Nothing! It's simply amazing to me that these people pretend as if a judge didn't just admonish all of them for Ministry of Truth or Orwellian levels of censorship. That's a big clue that what you're watching here is not free press. A free press would be celebrating this ruling. I mean, so it basically has some limits on what exactly the FBI, I think most essentially is, is able to do. And I think that, you know, you have to take a step back and acknowledge what the reality is about how the FBI has been interacting with this. And just look at January 6th itself, for example, right? It's not as though the FBI has been going in and saying, hey, take down this post, hey, take down this post. That's what they're alleging, but there's just not a lot of evidence to support that. What the actual f did you just say to me right now? This chud is Ryan J. Riley, and he's an imbecile. And he proved this because he once posted a picture of earbuds and thought they were rubber bullets. <laughs> Man. And what he said about the FBI just isn't true. We know for a fact now that the FBI put heavy pressure on the big tech outlets to suppress the Hunter Biden story under the guise that it was Russian disinformation. Here's the deal. We know that Twitter did reach out to somebody on the day of the Hunter Biden laptop story, and it was the FBI. We know that at 3.30, I believe it was in the afternoon, on that day, they set up a conference call with the FBI. And lo and behold, after that, they decide, oh my gosh, yeah, we have got to censor this story. We've got to throttle it down. And of course, the FBI knew that it was 100% legitimate. They'd had the laptop for over a year. This was an attempt, Jesse, to suppress a story that could change a presidential election. It was deliberate on Twitter's part and the FBI's part. It's just nuts to me that they're carrying water for this, but it doesn't end there because CNN, we're also being authoritarian enablers. Reading the words in this injunction, a quote, massive effort by the defendants to suppress speech based on content, those are the judge's words, calling the present case, quote, arguably involves the most massive attack against free speech in the United States history, Ellie. Yeah. It, it's a dramatic uh, decision by this judge. If you read through it, he's citing to literature and George Washington and Ben Franklin. Here's what really is astonishing to me. Spoiler, he's not astonished by the government's historic attack on free speech and our elections. This is a conservative ideology that clearly comes through in this decision. It's a conservative political ideology, right? You're right. It's fact. Thank you for admitting that it's conservatives who are standing up for the bedrock principles of America and state media Marxists who threaten it. But the ruling itself is the opposite of judicial conservatism. This is one of the most aggressive, far-reaching rulings you'll ever see. What this judge is purporting to do is to micromanage, really, the day-to-day -day interactions between essentially the entire executive branch, all these agencies that are listed as defendants, and the leading social media companies. And in the actual temporary injunction, the judge basically says, you're not allowed, administration, to talk to these social media companies about any protected free speech 
except for cybersecurity threats, national security threats, criminal threats. But where's the line? Who's going to police this? This is a judge trying to micromanage the day-to-day regular activities of the entire executive branch. I don't know that it's actually policeable by the judge, but it's really an astonishing... It's, I don't mean this necessarily as a criticism. This is a very activist judicial opinion. And there you have it. Enemy of the people. State media operatives that see an obvious ruling in line with our constitution as some kind of threat to their power. This is how you get authoritarianism. You're not going to get it with a guy like Trump or the Republicans because you need an institutional support base to enforce it. They could try, but it would instantly get shut down by the media, government institutions, the schools, and mass protests. But I think we can all see who does have that support base. We're watching it right now as the so-called free press runs cover for what this judge called the worst assault on the First Amendment in American history. According to CNN and MSNBC, Americans should not be allowed to freely communicate unless the Biden regime allows it. All right, folks, I hope you found that informative. If you did, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment to vent those frustrations. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.